The most difficult part about doing this review has been tearing myself away from this absolute banger of a game. I have completed four playthroughs and with a fifth in progress, I feel confident that I can deliver a pretty thorough review of Armoured Core 6 Fires of Rubicon. Straight off the bat, I'm just going to tell you this game is tremendous. Armoured Core 6 for me is a game that fires on all cylinders, literally in the case of my floating tank dual chain gun Armoured Core. The addictive garage component, the satisfying combat loop, the challenging bosses that will push you to your limits, stunning visuals and a banging soundtrack, Armoured Core delivers for veteran and new players alike. This is without even mentioning the captivating storyline with a colourful cast of characters that will go places you don't expect. Armoured Core is a special game that has absolutely captivated me and I hope by the end of this video I have managed to convey even a fraction of the passion that I feel for this game. And so it is with great pleasure that I present to you my review of Armoured Core 6 Fires of Rubicon. To preserve your experience with Armoured Core as well as I can, I will keep footage in this video to the first two chapters, and I will keep any major story reveals or cinematics out of the footage, but of course there will be some visual spoilers from those first two chapters. And big shout out to Bandai Namco for providing me with early access. I feel a necessary disclosure is my familiarity with the series of Armoured Core. I feel I sit somewhere between a brand new player and a true veteran, I have played all the Generation 1 games, Armoured Core 2, 3, 4 and 4 Answer. So while I may not be a veteran, I have a decent frame of reference of what to expect from an Armoured Core game. And in short, this game delivers everything I would expect but takes it to the next level. In regards to performance, I played this on PlayStation 5 and the game was absolutely flawless. Zero bugs, zero frame drops, just a full and complete polished game. And again, massive props to From Software for dropping a full and complete finished game with zero microtransactions. Of course, that means I can't comment on how well it runs on PC. I did play it on PC at a preview event last month, and the performance on that machine was excellent as well, but I have no specs or anything else for you. But yeah, the console versions seem pretty flawless. Let's talk a little bit about the setting. Again, I'm not going to go too deep into the story, nor am I going to share any major story spoilers, just the real basics of the setting and the major players involved. That said, if you don't want to hear any story details, then please go to the timestamp above and we'll rejoin you at the gameplay section. Armoured Core 6 is set on the planet Rubicon, a planet on the frontier of human exploration where a great resource, coral, was discovered. This sublime substance was a revolutionary energy source and data conduit and it catapulted humanity's technology forward. Yet this advancement all came to a halt about half a century ago, when a mysterious phenomena took place. The vast abundance of coral ignited in an event known as the Fires of Ibis. This cosmic firestorm not only burned Rubicon, but spread out into the stars themselves. Coral was thought to have been burned away entirely, yet greed has a funny way of persisting, and despite the planet being sealed, Corporations have now returned to Rubicon. You are an augmented human, C4621, and you have come to Rubicon under the command of the mysterious handler Walter. The four main factions at play are the Archibus and Balaam Corporations, the Rubicon Liberation Front, and the Planetary Closure Authority. Both Balaam and Archibus have their own in-house armoured core squads, the Red Guns of Balaam, and the Vespers of Archibus. You will come into contact with both groups a lot, whether working alongside them or acting against them, and both have distinct character. The Red Guns are like rooting tooting cowboys, who prefer explosive and kinetic weapons, whereas the Vespers are made up of augmented humans who generally have more sophisticated frames and energy weapons. It really is a rich foundation of lore, and I just love the distinct cast of characters we find within the game, whether it be the fanatical but sincere Rubicon Liberation Front or the superior and condescending tone of V2 Snail of the Vespers. This is V2 Snail, leader of the Vesper Second Squad. I will chair the briefing for this mission. This is an 
an operation of my own design. Consider it a privilege to be called to participate. Ostensibly, you have come here for work as an independent mercenary pilot. Yet it is clear there is more at work here, with the corporations and other shadowy factions poised to battle over the smouldering ruins, conflict is inevitable. But maybe along the way, 621 can find their own purpose. As anyone familiar with the channel will know, story and setting are a big deal for me in a video game. And on this front, Armoured Core 6 gets a 10 out of 10 for me. The lore goes deep, the characters are incredible, and it is chock full of secrets and intrigue. I will be covering lore on the channel, so if you are interested in that sort of thing, then consider subscribing. But trust me when I say that this story is an epic one, full of mystery, villains, heroes, sacrifice and heartbreak. There were times when I was left contemplating my choices and actions, sometimes taking minutes to decide which path I wanted to take, and I am so excited for you to experience the game yourself. And so the game starts with us being dropped into the planet, narrowly missing death at the hands of an orbital laser. Our mission? To find a working mercenary license, and even this tutorial mission does not go to plan, as we land miles away from our actual target, and so we have to learn the basics of movement in order to reach our target destination. You quickly learn how to boost along the ground, how to jump and thrust, and how to quick boost, which is essentially like a quick sidestep. While you are introduced to these one at a time, it becomes clear the later on you get into the game that mastery over this omnidirection is key to overcoming the challenges in Armoured Core 6, combining your upward movement with horizontal strafing and quick boosts. And then you have the assault boost, which is where you click in your left stick and you are fired forward like a missile. Not only is it great for covering great distances quickly, but there's a lot of movement tech you can use in the heat of combat. And I just can't wait to see what true Armoured Core technicians do with all these different abilities and movements. Not long after landing, you are introduced to the basics of combat. You have four weapon slots. They are all available to fire at the same time, you do not need to switch between weapons. Your shoulder buttons are for your shoulder weapons, and your trigger buttons are for your two arm weapons. Starting out in our basic armoured core, we have a sword in our left hand, a rifle in our right, and we have a missile pod on our right shoulder, so a well-balanced frame all around. The HUD is superbly done in my opinion. It conveys a lot of information in a very intuitive way. Altitude and speed are on the far left and right, and your full ammo count and reload status is in the bottom right. And while this full information is here on the bottom right, what I do like is this information is also conveyed around the reticle, but in a visual way. As your clip decreases, the bar decreases, and as your weapon reloads, it goes red and the meter moves up. Or if it's a weapon that's subject to overheating, a red bar will begin to build up over the ammo count. It's just really well done, and I can always tell what my ammo situation is just at a glance, without taking my focus away from the combat at hand. The bottom left shows your health, repair kits, and scanner. And at the bottom you have your energy bar. All your movement abilities use energy, and so of course you want to keep your eye on that as you're in combat. However, one thing to know is that while it depletes while you're in the air and boosting around, it will quickly refill when you land on the ground. Managing your energy is key to most engagements, and therefore it is right that it takes centre place on your HUD. I got used to this layout pretty fast, just glancing at bits for key information when I'm in combat and I think that most people will find it quite intuitive. And then the bar that's above the energy bar is one of the most important in the game, the stagger or strain bar. And the strain mechanic is one of the most important features in the entire game. As for me personally, it played a massive role in every single boss fight. While yours appears at the bottom of the screen, the enemy's appears at the top part of the reticle, any enemy that you're aiming on. And the basics of strain are this, any damage helps build it up, however there are certain weapons that do far heavier damage to the stagger bar, mainly explosives or melee weapons like the sword. And so having the sword equipped in the tutorial is a great shout because it's a good way to learn the basics of strain and I would highly recommend using the sword on a few enemies when you are playing this tutorial. When the strain meter is filled it flashes red and this is when their load limit has been reached. It essentially stuns them for a few seconds and opens them up to more damage. There is a type of damage called direct damage 
and you can either get this by catching an enemy who's unaware with a few shots or by damaging them when they're in this stagger state. Believe me, for some of the high octane boss battles later, getting a moment of respite when the enemy is frozen and getting that opportunity to deal some high DPS is absolutely essential to winning the boss fight. By the end of the game, I had my boss killer build perfected, a tank AC with two shoulder mounted bazookas and dual chain guns. My technique would be this, go directly at the boss, fire both bazookas at once and insta stagger them and then unload with my chain guns for the damage. However, it is a blade that cuts both ways as you yourself are open to be staggered. And later on, there are bosses who can stagger you within seconds or within one shot. So keep an eye on it and keep moving. But we are getting ahead of ourselves. Let's return to the tutorial mission. So yeah, the mission teaches you the basics, shooting with your basic arm rifle, firing with your missile pod, and it even teaches you to multi-lock. This is a technique you can use with some missile and rocket pods. You hold down the shoulder button and paint different enemies with your reticle and this will split the missile volley between them. And of course, as I've said, the sword is really awesome, dealing high damage and high strain. But it isn't all plain sailing because just as you finally pick up your mercenary license, you are accosted by a PCA assault helicopter. This is the first boss of the game and there's no getting around it, you have to defeat this monster in order to proceed. This attack helicopter is absolutely no joke for a tutorial boss. It forces you to utilize everything you've learned so far, using your melee to stagger it, taking cover and using your quick boost to avoid its missiles that it rains down on you, and just make sure you cut through its decent pool of health before it cuts through yours. Then upon your victory, you are delivered to the garage and the real game begins. The structure of how Armoured Core plays out is quite simple. Between missions, you're in the garage, which is essentially your base, where you can tinker with your Armoured Core, do any upgrades, and fight in the arena. And from the garage, when you're ready to head back out and advance the story, you simply choose the Sortie option. It's a mission-based game, and after each mission concludes, you are returned to the garage once more. There are five acts, each varying in length, but they generally all follow a story arc, that usually wraps up nicely in the final mission, whilst also feeding into the overarching narrative. I completed my first playthrough in about 13 hours, and I think that is the perfect length for this type of game that demands multiple playthroughs. In terms of the structure of the game and how it progresses, from my experience it is very close to the fourth generation of Armoured Core, especially Armoured Core 4 Answer. That being that there is a story progression to the missions, and at certain points you have to choose one mission over another. And after you beat the game, you are immediately placed into a new game plus. However, at any time in your new game plus cycles, you can replay missions you've already completed to achieve that coveted S ranking and get some more money. But these replays will not affect the progression of your current campaign. I think this is a great system. Nothing is restricted by starting a new game cycle. You still have all your components, the shop is fully unlocked, and you can replay any mission at any time in order to perfect it and get those rankings. But I said earlier it demands multiple playthroughs. Why does it demand multiple playthroughs? Well, at certain points you have a choice between two missions, meaning you can't do both, so you'll have to do multiple playthroughs to have played through every single mission. But more importantly, there are multiple endings so you will need to replay in order to experience everything in the game. There are also New Game Plus exclusive only missions, meaning that no matter what choice you make in your first new game, you won't be able to see these missions until you've recycled and gone through into your next New Game Plus. I personally relish jumping back into a New Game Plus. Being able to smash Act 1 bosses with my new Enhanced Armoured Core is very, very satisfying. And the sense of discovery and excitement after being on your third New Game Plus and finding a new exclusive mission just can't be replicated. It's a great experience and it's why I think the length of the game is perfect the way it is. The missions themselves vary in size and objective. Some are simple wipe out all enemies, but sometimes they are complex multi-stage missions like the sand crawler mission in the first act that requires you to progress the mission through evolving objectives like advancing towards the crawler without getting blasted by the main laser, then taking out its legs, then climbing up its hide, destroying its generators, and then finally destroying its main laser 
in a pseudo boss fight. And of course, one of my favourite missions is Operation Wallclaimer, where you have to take out some Gatling gun emplacements, then take out a dangerous tetrapod, before climbing the wall through the interior and having a showdown with the juggernaut boss on top of the wall. So going into each mission you need to be aware of your resources by managing your ammo and repair kits, making sure they last the whole mission. Now repair kits are essentially your healing items in this game and you have three for the level. However, the longer levels do have checkpoints where essentially you get a full refill if you die. Now I'm sure a lot in the community don't like this idea of having checkpoints but believe me it is necessary for new players. Some of the levels are lengthy and include a boss as well on top of that. So if you have to go through a 10 to 15 minute mission and then get killed by the boss at the end of it and had to restart entirely, I think that's just a little bit frustrating. Of course, hardcore players can just choose to ignore the checkpoint system and restart the mission from scratch anytime they die. And indeed, when you want to get those best scores, the S ranks on replaying missions, you will need to do it without using a checkpoint. There are also resupply points in certain missions, usually one with a boss, and these points, if you interact with them, refill all your ammo, repair kits and health. And again, I think it's a necessary feature given the length of some of the missions, and it allows you to go fresh-faced into a boss fight after a lengthy fight. One final thing about the checkpoints, and I did mention this in my preview video a few weeks ago, is that when you die and you can reload a checkpoint, you actually have the option to go to assembly and reassemble your armoured core if you believe the situation requires you to have a different setup. In prior armoured core games, I usually sold most pieces of weaponry and armoured core pieces that I didn't think I was using at the time for my build because money wasn't that plentiful and in fact you could lose money on missions if you weren't efficient with your ammo. However, money is super plentiful in armoured core Fires of Rubicon. Indeed, you can even replay missions to grind out money if you need it. By the end, I just had so much money I was just buying parts just to build up my collection essentially. I think this checkpoint system with the assembly encourages you to do that. Whilst my tank with the dual chain guns could brute force its way through most, there are still some missions that require you to have a little bit more mobility. And so personally, I believe that this game encourages you to have multiple AC parts so you can build out multiple different builds. Now returning to the bosses, the bosses are really intense in Armored Core 6. Bosses are interspersed between missions, but as you'd expect, the biggest showdowns happen at the chapter finales. And boy, these are some bombastic showdowns that in my opinion, far exceed the bosses of prior games, both in visual design and in complexity. These guys will light up your screen and light up your Armored Core, unfortunately. What I loved about my Armored Core journey was how my Armored Core evolved and my playstyle evolved as I encountered skill check after skill check, usually in the form of a boss. I started out with a bipedal Armored Core with two bazookas and two missile pods for overwhelming power and stagger. But as the bosses got more demanding, I decided to up my DPS potential, and so I swapped out the missile pods for chain guns, as there is an upgrade that allows you to take four hand weapons and we'll talk about the upgrade system shortly. But near the end of the game, the bosses got really, really difficult, and so I went the full way, trading my legs for tank trades. With two shoulder-mounted bazookas and two chain guns in hand, I was ready for any challenge. Getting right up in a boss's smug face and staggering him instantly by firing both shoulder-mounted bazookas at once was an amazing feeling, before tearing their health to shred with my dual chain guns. A playstyle that can only be described as But the beauty of Armored Core is that this is just my playstyle. There are hundreds of parts to choose from. As many battles are won in the shop and the garage as they are out on a mission. And so with that said, let us now move into the garage and the construction of your Armored Core. After defeating the tutorial helicopter, and a valid license in your hand, you are granted access to the garage and Allmind, the AI that assists all mercenaries. There we gain access to the garage, the shop, and we also gain access to the arena, tutorials, and OS tuning. In time, you will also get access to Nest, the multiplayer arena. So you do access multiplayer directly from your campaign menu. This was not something I got to test, obviously, when I had early access as there were no servers. 
But having watched Ouroboro, Fighting Cowboy and Armored Core Legacy in the Bandai Namco Showcase, it looks absolutely amazing and I'd highly recommend you check that out if you want more information on the PvP. But yeah, this is where the magic happens. And as with any good From Software game, your drip is one of the most important parts of the game. And Armored Core 6 certainly delivers with the customization available to you. Full color customization is available. You can color your AC piece by piece or apply a scheme to the full mech, whether you choose a pre-made palette or make your own. Beyond this, you have patterning and weathering. And I was continually changing up my aesthetic throughout my playthrough. When it comes to decals that you put on your armored core and your emblem that represents you, there are plenty of pre-made ones to choose from and you can unlock more through certain events or by defeating certain arena combatants and taking theirs. Yet you are able to make your own fully from scratch and what I've seen from previous Armored Core games leads me to believe there are some real creative people out there. But uh, yeah, not me, I'll probably just have a cross or something when I eventually do PvP. But of course, the main function of the garage is tinkering with your AC, buying those new shiny parts and putting them on. And mastering this part of the game is absolutely critical to overcome the game's greatest challenges. There are a lot of technical stats that goes into constructing an AC, and there are some Armour Core veterans that will be better explaining the minutia of the stats that you can see on screen. However, let's break it down to the basics. You A need an Armour Core that suits your needs, having the weaponry and the movement that you like. B it needs to have the weight limit to be able to support those weapons so it's not overburdened. And C it needs to have the energy required to power all the weapons and the core itself. As Iron Pineapple so succinctly said in his preview video, the legs are the most important part of a frame when considering what class you want to be running. There are the bipedal legs for the more balanced build, the reverse joint legs for high mobility, getting a boost to their jumps, their lighter builds. Tanks are the heaviest AC class, being able to sport the heaviest weapons, but of course lose a lot of maneuverability, especially in the air. And then you have the most unique class, the tetrapods. They are somewhat heavy like tanks, not quite as, but can support a lot of weaponry. But more importantly, they are able to fly into the air and then hover, essentially turning it into a weapons platform that can rain death from above. The head, body and arms have various properties, but the main things you need to concern yourself with are weight, again do you need lighter arms if you're about to be overburdened, and health. For each part of your armoured core has an individual AP value, AP being this game's health. And so if you are a tank build, you might just want to go with the heaviest arms, body and head that have the highest AP value. Conversely, if you're using a reverse jointed AC and you are prioritizing mobility over everything else, you might want to go for those lighter parts and lighter weapons so you get more energy efficiency out of your AC, meaning you can stay airborne for longer. Balancing your AC build with the weapons you want as well as the mobility you want is a great challenge and is a really fun part of the game, you will spend hours in the garage perfecting your builds. The parts shop is of course where you purchase most of your new parts. The shop doesn't have a full stock when you first start playing, these unlock as you progress the campaign and meet certain milestones. Yet you can unlock parts in different ways, beating certain arena combatants and even finding certain boxes within missions. Yes there is reasons to look in every nook and cranny while you're out on sortie, as you can find lore logs and new parts, and you'd be surprised how valuable some of the parts are that you find in the missions. But there is really hundreds and hundreds of weapons and parts, I certainly have not tried them all, I mainly stick to my kinetics and explosives. But I mentioned earlier that I think the game is encouraging you to try out different builds, and thankfully there is a great way for you to save your builds, AC Data. When you are happy with a certain build, go into AC data and save that as a preset. That means you can load it at any time without having to rebuild it from scratch. As I said earlier, different situations call for different ACs sometimes, and sometimes you just have a nice looking AC that you want to keep and bring out later. And having watched PvP with Oro and Fighting Cowboy and Armored Core Legacies, I can see that these save slots for AC data will be pretty massive in being able to pre-build different things for PvP. However, in the first chapter your options are quite limited compared at least to what they are at the end of the game. 
and this is why the tutorial is really appealing. Yes, there is a tutorial system that unlocks in the garage, and it unlocks maybe one or two missions at a time as you proceed through the first act. And part of the reason that these tutorials are so appealing is that they actually give you new items and new weapons early on in the game when you don't have that many. Aside from this, the tutorials are just great. I didn't actually play them during the preview event a few weeks ago, and I picked up way more tips in this than I thought. Even veteran players will get value out of these tutorials, not only because of the items you get, but because it teaches you about the nuances of AC6's deeper systems that are new to the game. This includes things like the damage boost that Assault Boost gives, how to use a shield effectively, and the Ricochet element. Ricochet is sort of a damage mitigation that higher armor enemies get, unless you get close or stagger them. So great stuff all round, and they are slowly rolled out as you progress through the first chapter. There is one final way to get new parts and weapons, and this is known as the Log Hunt. Certain missions have combat logs that are attached to certain enemies, and should you defeat them you are awarded with a combat log. Each combat log essentially gives you experience points towards the next hunter rank, and as you rank up you gain new parts. This is quite a cool system as it's another reason to go back and replay levels to hunt down further enemies and gain more combat logs. Finally, near the end of chapter 1, the arena is also unlocked. For those unfamiliar with Armored Core's arena system, it's essentially a way for you to challenge other AC pilots. It's PvE, but it's a way for you to test your skills against more difficult enemies. As you defeat enemies, you move up in your rank, and over the course of the campaign you can climb to the very top of the arena rankings. Now there are a couple of reasons that you should do these arena fights. Firstly, they are a test of your skill and AC builds. Most builds are able to chew through the basic enemies of the game, however you will face enemy armoured cores throughout the campaign, and they are far more challenging. And so you do need to get used to beating them on the reg, and the arena is a good way to test that out. The second reason is simply for your immersion. Each arena combatant has a little bit of lore about them, and these are people that you will come across during your campaign, so it's great just to know the cast of characters that you are facing off against. The third and main reason is the resources that you get. Not only do you get money, but this is the only way to obtain OST chips. These chips are used in OS tuning, a vital part of your progression. OS tuning not only gives you access to new abilities like the kick, free aiming, and quick turn, but it also gives you passive improvements, like direct damage increases, and increased damage for each of the weapon types, kinetic, explosive, laser, and melee. Some of these abilities are genuinely game changing, like pulse armor, an AoE attack, or the humble kick, which is just great at building up strain on enemies, or kicking them off the edge. There's also the weapon bay, this allows you to swap your shoulder weapons with a weapon bay, meaning you can have four hand weapons, that you can freely switch between instead of having shoulder weapons. And this was something I used quite a lot early on when I had double bazookas and double assault rifles. A chrysalid form of my final tank build, I just didn't know it yet. The one final thing that's good about the arena is that you get the blueprints for each of the people you defeat. And so going back to AC data, not only can you save your own designs here, you can load their build from these preset blueprints, and it's just a really nice feature. Everything in Armored Core 6 is a nice feature or well done, and I could just keep talking about the game forever and ever, but I think I should just wrap up now and sum up the main points of why this game absolutely slaps. Alright, so listen, it's just a great game from start to finish. The story is strong, the music is banging, the combat is incredible, the bosses are so, so difficult. Any concerns there were about this being an easy game really need to be thrown out the window, I was stuck on some of the bosses for over an hour, and that's always the sign of a good From Software game. I was obviously expecting to enjoy this game. The announcement trailer last December was genuinely one of the best trailers I'd ever seen, and I knew from that moment I was all in on Armored Core 6. But what I wasn't expecting was literally to have completed four playthroughs before I even did this review. Back to back. Because it is that good and I just want to find every secret and complete every mission, in this brilliant game. This is a fast, high octane game that even for people like me who aren't the most technically gifted at games will still have a lot of fun and be able to progress through. And for the more talented players among us, I cannot wait to see what you do with the movement tech in these games. 
The combat is challenging and addictive, the freedom of choice for building your AC is massive, and above all else, this is a stunning looking game that immerses you fully into its morally ambiguous world. As a lore creator, I could not have asked for more. The characters are brilliant, evil, snarky, snotty, jealous, brave and intelligent in equal numbers. There is some real mystery to be found here, and you will make heartbreaking choices that lead you to ask yourself, did I make the right choice? And I'll tell you what is the right choice, buying Armored Core 6. Not only is this most likely my game of the year, but it's also catapulted into my favourite games list. An extraordinary sci-fi mech adventure with fluid frenetic combat, blisteringly difficult bosses, insane replayability, endless mech construction options, all topped off by a thought-provoking story with endings that still have me thinking about them days after I completed it. With all that said, I wholeheartedly recommend Armored Core 6 Fires of Rubicon. And now, if you'll excuse me, I have my fifth playthrough to complete.